Okay, welcome back from your um, journey with Christina Peterson in her short blog piece and some reflection you might be doing there about your own courses and ways they engage emotion, that feeling of being um, linked to the learning, which is really this third point, which is the supportive environment um, part. We are not alone. I'm in a place that matters. And um, my teacher, as a caution here, might also be thinking about not just an achievement gap, but a belonging gap. Um, something I think about often is when I was first in math as a math major, I realized I didn't belong in that major because they were all being prepared to use math and chemistry, my other major, in ways that I didn't want to do. I really wanted to understand food science and um, feeding the world in a different way than what they were talking about in the classes. So I had a belonging gap. I didn't belong there. And I was treated that way. I was weeded out because I didn't belong there. In a science class, a biology class, I was thinking about new food, nutrition, and science writing as the things I wanted to do. In that biology class, they really encouraged me to think about how I would communicate with others about um, health and human bodies and changes and things that were going on in the world that impacted human health. I felt like I belonged. I switched how I did my writing, but I still felt like I belonged. So my interests were engaged in the biology class. My other ways of learning, I learned through writing, um, were valued in that biology class, not just experiments, but also writing up the experiments. Um, there was coaching and peer learning. How would we work together doing an experiment? That's still really important and even more important in an online space. And the piece that was missing in my um, undergrad years and most of my higher ed years was reflecting on part of the journey as part of the class. What did I learn? What am I not learning? Where am I disconnected from learning? Those things really begin to matter about the belonging gap and a supportive environment. In fact, much of the current research that's really paying attention to motivation is saying that belonging and supportive environment actually need to come first. If I believe that I can belong here, that science belongs to me, that math belongs to me, that writing belongs to me, I can find a way that the aims have value. I can work with the teacher in um, uh, ways that learning feels possible. I can talk to my peers, I can interact with them, and I can reach that achievement. So the gap is sooner. It's if the belonging gap is there, you're not going to get achievement. It's not an achievement gap so much as it is a belonging gap. Motivation is fueled by feeling like you're working with others. So there's the steel, the flint, and the tinder, and they all come together in order to work and um, create an environment. So again, it's the planning thing. How do you connect to your learners' worlds? How do you build assignments that seed the learning, that help people take off? So in a landscape architecture soils course that's about the Mississippi River, they don't all need to go on and be soil scientists, nor do they need to go design lived and built experiences. But they do need to understand public policy about water and air and soil in order to be good citizens in communities that live alongside the Mississippi. So in a teacher planning for that course, they need to think about how students are connected to water and to soil and to air and to those elements as part of the planning for their learning about belonging. What's it like in your space? How does your space impact another learner's space or another community? And that's part of that creating activities so students are comparing, being transparent about thinking through how does what you're thinking about in this college level learning hook up with what somebody else is thinking about. Um, if there are three ideas on the table, what are some commonalities? What are differences that might need to be included? Being able to talk about different takes on problem solving for the Mississippi, um, it takes a particular climate to not say one person is right or one approach is right. What are the things that are right for a community? And being transparent about helping students figure out how to have those difficult conversations. And even for practicing how to do a skill, arts, theater, other kinds of performance, how do you create a climate in which your learning matters to your peers so they're coaching you to be a better 
artist, performer, maker? Um, how are you helping them to look um, at each other's work and give them feedback about moving ahead in their own unique way to do something better? A climate for learning that's not critique about tearing something apart, but moving something forward. And that's part of the assessment too, is building students into their own assessment, doing things like um, Providing opportunities for feedback on your teaching and assignments can let students know that you're willing to hear feedback from others, which might mean that they're willing to hear feedback from others. So as you're inviting feedback on your teaching, they can begin to invite feedback on their learning to have their own questions about a project or about a performance or about a paper um, so that they can ask their peers, here are three things I would like some feedback on. Please tell me more. And it's not you, the teacher, telling them how they should gather the feedback. You do that same sort of thing when you're modeling how you're collecting feedback on your own teaching and assignments. Having the comment copy of the learning syllabus is one way of collecting feedback on teaching. Um, another way is to gather early term learning and teaching data. Um, having, again, those questions for students to give you feedback on your course, but also asking them to reflect early on about their own learning, what's been working, what hasn't worked so well, what's one small change they can make in order to learn better, maybe from some resources that you provide, um, and maybe just by um, telling you what they're having difficulties with so that you can say, well, here are some strategies that other practitioners in this field have used to move ahead. So again, a supportive environment brings in planning and activities and assessment. And you can think more about some specific interventions, little small things, in a really short piece that's by David Yeager, Gregory Walton, and Jeffrey Cohen about addressing some of these gaps and short exercises that students can do that enhance belonging short-term and long-term. And that will be the end of our um, reading, presenting for this time, and you will then go on to your discussion forum as you move into the next part of our focus on motivation and these three key components.